when we look inside Mercury, we notice that it has a fairly large core, about 60% of the entire planet is metallic by mass, um, but its mantle and crust are made of similar materials to the moon, silicate rocks. Um, the core is iron nickel, and it turns out that Mercury does have a weak magnetic field. What can you tell me about the core of Mercury based on that information? So um, I'm seeing mostly B that we expect that Mercury's core must be metal because it has a magnetic field. Or sorry, well, that's true too. The core must be metal and it must be liquid. So when we looked at the magnetic field of Earth, um, we saw that uh, you know when we look at our electromagnet model and our dynamo model for how a magnetic field is produced, we need to have a fluid conductor. So we need the uh, core to be at least partially liquid and we need it to be metallic. And Mercury must have a liquid core, therefore, uh, because it does have a weak magnetic field. Not only is Mercury's core very large, but it's also at least partially liquid. Um, the surface of Mercury, as we saw, has distinctive features that are not found on the moon. Uh, these are called scarps. And so these are essentially long cliffs, uh, but they're not the walls of craters. So we expect to see you know, cliffs at the walls of craters, but we don't expect to see just lines on the surface. Um, and so let me ask you this question about how might those scarps have formed? Okay, I'm seeing mostly D, um, that these scarps could have formed from the rapid shrinking of the interior, which is right. So what about the other options? Um, asteroid impact wouldn't leave a scarp that wasn't the rim of a crater. And you can see from the shape of this, it, it's not, uh, the edge of a circle, and most asteroid impacts leave circular craters behind. So that's not an option. Um, Mercury does not have plate tectonics. This is unique to Earth in our solar system. And so the reason for that is it doesn't have a mantle, a liquid mantle, uh, to uh, transport via convection plates. Uh, so the existence of a mantle is uh, you know, that'll happen if you have a layer of rock that is at least semi-liquid. Um, and while Mercury does have a liquid core, it doesn't appear that that has enough convective motion in it to carry plates around. So there's no evidence of plate tectonics, no other features such as uh, mountain ranges that are not associated with craters or things like faults. Um, so these scarps kind of look like faults. And so plate tectonics would be a reasonable guess. Um, but there aren't other features that also give away uh, the existence of plate tectonics. Uh, the scarps have nothing to do with the atmosphere or eruptions from volcanoes. Um, they turn out to be from a rapid shrinking of the interior. At least that's what we think right now. So it's as if Mercury, um, you know, early in its existence uh, was a little, had a little bit higher volume. And as all objects cool, they tend to shrink somewhat. And so Mercury, um, apparently shrank quickly. And that led to the surface, you know, the, the crust that formed on the surface uh, collapsing as that shrinkage occurred. And so these sort of cliffs formed as kind of wrinkles on the surface after it shrunk. So that's the current idea for where these scarps came from. Uh, Mercury has some other weird surface features. Actually, they're literally called weird terrain. That's the scientific word for them. Um, it has one large impact basin called the Caloris Basin. And on the other side of where that large impactor happened, some of the crust got kind of uh, pushed outward by the shock wave that rippled through the planet. So I didn't include a picture of that here, but it's pretty cool to go look at. I think you can probably find it in um, Starry Night. Okay, now let me ask you this. Um, while we're thinking about the idea of planets once being molten and then cooling, um, let's compare the Mercury and the Moon. And just what are your expectations uh, for how quickly either of those objects should cool? So I'm seeing the most votes for C, that the moon should cool faster because it's farther from the sun. And this actually turns out to have basically no effect on how quickly a planet cools. Uh, the amount of radiation received from the sun does heat the surface, um, but it's not the cause of the initial heat that the planet started with. So that heat is called the heat of formation. Uh, you can think of, you know, how much, um, if I have a pot of boiling water on the stove, right? Or mm, I don't like it. Let's make a caramel apple because it's Halloween, right? Okay, so I've got my pot of caramel on the stove 
it's this hot bubbly fluid eventually if i take it off of the stove you know coat my apple with it then it's going to cool and harden well somewhat still kind of sticky uh, anyway the caramel cools slowly and the amount of heat that's trapped within that molten caramel is a lot hotter and even if i you know shine an incandescent lamp directly on my caramel uh, the, the amount of heat that's trapped within the molten caramel is way more than the heat that's being added by the lamp. And that's going to be true whether my lamp is close or whether my lamp is far away. It simply doesn't have as much ability to uh, put heat into the surface as that molten uh, liquid has to hold on to that heat. Okay, but the um, size of the moon and mercury isn't the only factor that we have. Uh, the other consideration we have to um, take into account is what was the history of these objects? What's the actual history? Because all things are not equal. They don't have the same history. And the moon um, has had more recent impacts, evidently. Um, and so it may have been that um, the moon has been molten more recently than Mercury. So Mercury uh, seems to have cooled faster. Uh, that's evident by the scarps. Um, and part of that may be due to the history of when it had its most recent impact. Okay, so both of these are good answers. A is a good answer. E is also a good answer. Okay, so I mentioned that there is some geological um, activity um, on Mercury's surface, and this is um, evidence of volcanism on Mercury. So what we're looking at here is a false color image where the orange are, you know, they look relatively smooth, and that's because it's a lava flow similar to the Maria on the moon. Um, and this is a crater that's been filled in by a later lava flow. And then on top of that lava flow, there's more craters that have since hit. And some of these craters have, are big enough to have blasted away um, the material, so ejected the material uh, from that lava area. And the blue colors underneath are the exposed, uh, the exposed floor material. So you can see it's the same color, meaning the same material as the surrounding regions outside of that uh, lava flow area. So um, this is the Colaris Basin. It has a rim a mile high. It's larger than the state of Texas. Um, so this is the you know, extreme large impactor where uh, the shock wave was enough that it sent ripples through the entire planet and puffed up some weird terrain on the other side of the planet. 